Um, this morning you'll hear from me, Nigel Norris, the CEO of Encounter Youth, Minister for Police and Emergency Services, uh, Mr. Dan Cregan, and Superintendent uh, Joanna Howard. Um, we'll also have some availability from our uh, Schoolies Takeover competition winner, uh, Gemma, from Concordia College, uh, possibly some green team volunteers and a couple of students from uh, Glenanga International High School. So we'll kick off. Uh, in County Youth for the past 26 years is very proud to support uh, another cohort of graduating Year 12s as they follow in line with Australian culture in celebrating milestones. We know that uh, Australia is very, um, has a proud history of celebrating milestones and this graduation cohort of Year 12s is no different. We're anticipating approximately 4,000 young people to be celebrating schoolies in the Fleurio region and in County Youth and our strong army of in, in County Youth Green Team excuse me and in County Youth and our strong army of Green Team volunteers will be on hand to support our year 12s to celebrate this true rite of passage but also to celebrate it in safe and positive ways. Uh, this year we've worked very hard to create a, a, another unique uh, entertainment and celebration atmosphere at Schoolies Festival. Uh, the Schoolies Festival will include uh, live entertainment from our outdoor stage. Um, again, we're bringing back amusement rides uh, where young people can have unlimited uh, amusement rides over the weekend. Our ever popular schoolies photo booth. And we're very pleased to announce that this year with the support of local NDIS uh, providers in the, in the Fluoro region, uh, what is an Australian first will be bringing a sensory space for school leavers to participate with disabilities, enjoying the Schoolies Festival, but also a safe place for them to regulate and recharge um, as they uh, enjoy their achievement of completing Year 12. As a, a health promotion charity in counties is very passionate about this announcement because we believe that Year 12s that have successfully achieved the result of uh, completing their high schooling with disabilities have even more so right to celebrate this milestone. So we're very pleased and very grateful for the support of uh, the local Fleury Plan Management NDIS provider and five other NDIS providers to ensure to make this uh, exciting announcement possible. Across the weekend we'll of course be um, working very hard to support our young people in every major accommodation venue uh, across the region on every Schoolies Festival free bus service provided by the, the South Australian Government and that will stretch a bus service across the region ensuring that young people don't need to use their cars over the weekend but can enjoy uh, getting on a bus uh, carefree and heading into the festival and then getting home safely. This bus service will also be available for bookings pre and post the schoolies event so that they can get from Adelaide to Victor Harbour and return. Uh, across, across this uh, year we've been working hard to ensure that all of those safety messages are getting through to our young people through our extensive alcohol and other drug education program that Encounter Youth is proud to deliver to over 30,000 students, parents and teachers. So we'd encourage our young people to remember those key messages from those education seminars uh, and also finalise your plans for the weekend. We know from our research that young people that are more planned and organised for this weekend uh, can have a better opportunity to navigate this safely. Young people that uh, stick to those plans, buy your ticket, get organised, get on the free Schoolies Festival bus and participate in the full range of activities uh, gives them the best opportunity not only to enjoy the weekend but take uh, advantage of all of the services provided not only from our volunteers uh, but also from the emergency services across the weekend. Beautiful. Uh, next up, we'll be doing this. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll go on. Thanks. Yep. Next up. Thanks, Nigel. Thank you, Minister. As Nigel has indicated, the rite of passage, of course, that we have seen in South Australia and other Australian states is that those who are completing their studies would like to celebrate. Now, message to the class of 2024 is please celebrate responsibly. We want you to have an enjoyable time at schoolies, but a safe time as well. We'd ask you to think of your friends, your family, their families, and people in the communities that are around you. It's important for me to emphasise that there are very safe options for you to get around. There'll be more than 20,000 trips that are facilitated by nearly $300,000 in state government funding. 
and also the significant effort of volunteers and those who are assisting Encounter Youth. Of course, emergency services will also be supporting the weekend and we're joined by Inspector Howard, and I might turn to Inspector Howard in terms of the police presence and resources available over the weekend. Thank you, Minister. Good morning, everyone. I'm Superintendent Joanne Howard. I'm the officer in charge of the Hills Fluoro Local Service Area, and it gives us much pride to continue to support Encounter Youth in delivering schoolies for 2024. Our message to school leavers that are coming down to the Flurio is to exercise patience as you make your way down there. For those that have got tickets on the bus, excellent choice. For those that are coming under their own steam, please be respectful on the roads. We expect more traffic, so just take it easy and get down there at your own speed. Be sure that you're not distracted and make sure that you have a chat with the passengers in your car that they're behaving appropriately too. We'll have an increased police presence as um, we've got people travelling down and also on a return trip. And during the period of the festival, you'll see more police in the area. We've got a high visibility response. We've um, increased the size of police that are coming down and we've got support agencies that are helping us to conduct dog patrols down there. We've got traffic assisting as well and of course our local police. I think quite um, exciting also is our road safety section are coming down. They'll be meeting and greeting with the students in the caravan parks and accommodation centres. They'll be sharing road safety awareness information and education and they'll also be providing some voluntary breath testing for those that might have had a few beverages the night before and are thinking about driving the next day. But really what we're saying is if you've had some drinks, don't be driving. It's the safest option and there are plenty of alternate transport options down in the Flurio for the weekend. While school leavers are coming down and visiting and having a good time, the Flurio is the place of an excellent community and they're really patient in supporting the activities for schoolies. So we ask for school leavers to be respectful in the local community and make sure that people who are down there can go about their daily business. Thank you. This year's event obviously marks another tragedy with Harley Stevens. Is there advice to the school leavers this year to perhaps even leave their cars at home? We heard Nigel talk about the bus there going car free. Is that, I guess, more on the radar this year as far as advice goes to, to the school leavers? So we know school leavers um, in the Flurio attracts an increase in road safety messaging and we're aware that the transport options that are being put on by Encounter Youth are really excellent this year and many students have already availed themselves of those tickets. If you haven't, my understanding is you can still get online and do so, so I would encourage you to do that. But there will be people that will drive and so the message is really clear. Be respectful, drive to the conditions, don't be using drugs or alcohol if you're driving and don't be distracted. Take good care. That's what we're asking people to do. Has, Has last year's tragedy, I suppose, prompted this extra police presence? Not at all. We've always had a strong extra police presence for schoolies. It's about taking care of our school leaders while they're down there and being mindful that there's anywhere up to 3,000 or 4,000 influx of people in an area. And so we provide the adequate um, community safety protection. Has there been a conscious effort, though, to provide more options this year, as far as we know, the driver in Charlie's case? wasn't drinking, um, has there been a conscious effort into that? Um, not from a policing perspective, we've always had a really firm and clear road safety position for any type of event, including schoolies, but I'm unclear whether or not um, the transport options have increased this year. I might revert to Nigel to have a discussion around that, but we're very comfortable with the road safety presence that we've got in the Flurio for this weekend. Superintendent, there have been some reports of some particularly nasty and dangerous chemicals in some ecstasy tablets and um, even cocaine in South Australia. Any, any warning, I guess, to, to school leaders who might head down that way about the dangers of those things? Yeah, I think um, everybody knows that drugs are illegal. They're illicit substances. It's against the law to take them and it's unsafe. So don't be taking drugs. Should we hear from the competition winner? Yeah. Well, yeah. Got to Emma. Yeah. So just... Sorry. Sorry, Nigel. Just like to... Um, yeah, this year we ran a very special competition for schoolies to enhance their overall schoolies experience. Um, we called it the schoolies takeover, where we gave the opportunity for one school leaver to uh, actively participate within the festival event by performing through and showcasing their talents and abilities to their current cohort. And I'm very pleased to announce that the winner of that competition was uh, Gemma from Concordia College. Uh, Gemma will, has already um, undertaken as part of winning that competition uh, specialised coaching from some of our long-term artists and DJs. Uh, she's already had that so that she'll be even more so confident to perform in front of uh, her cohort of friends. 
um, and it's probably the largest crowd that she's ever performed with. So I'll introduce you to Gemma. Hello, yes, so I've won the takeover competition. Um, I had to submit a mix and yeah, I was able to win that. So I put together a bunch of party tracks which I thought would be suitable and I'm very excited for the weekend. I think it's an amazing opportunity for me um, to celebrate with all of my friends and be able to be there in front of them. So I'm very, very excited for the opportunity and very grateful. It's been a while since most of us have left school, but what, <laughs> what is the vibe down there these days? Why is it still something that uh, school leaders want to get amongst? Well, I would say that schoolies is, you know, it's a great way to celebrate with all of our friends together and everyone is just a great atmosphere. So yeah, I'm hoping that the music, I'll play some that can enhance the mood and get everyone, you know, happy singing together. So yeah, very excited. Is there much of a stigma attached to the event in your opinion? Is it something that you talk about with your friends and decide whether to go or not to go? Yeah, look, I think that there were some discussions around going or not and obviously people have some mixed opinions on schoolies but we all decided to go in the end and I think everyone's going to support each other, be all there together so yeah we've had some discussions around it but we've all decided to go. What does it mean to uh, play uh, this set and what's on the mix? Any special bangers? <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, it means so much to me. I think it's obviously an incredible opportunity and a lot of people don't get to experience something like this to this size. Um, yes, I've been putting together a good set with some good music and I'm very excited to share it with everybody and yes, some pop music and yeah, it'll be good. When you hear about um, what's been organised, the transport options, the extra police presence, does that give you a bit of peace of mind? Definitely. That was one thing that made my friends and I decide that it was a good idea to go um, because we know that Encounter and Schoolies um, is very supportive, you know, with the spaces that they're offering us and everything that they have. Yeah, I'm very, very excited. And what are your plans as a student going down this weekend as well? Are you driving or are you getting one of the buses or what are your So I'll plans be this going down with my friends. Um, I think we're getting driven down so I can bring all of my things with me. But yes, we've decided to organise that. Excellent. Could we describe your full name, Gemma, and yeah. the spelling? Gemma Hayward, J E W M A H A Y W A R D. Great, and your school? Concordia College. Thanks, Gemma. Thanks, Gemma. Perfect. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. There might be some questions of the day, team. And, um, oh, yeah, Still yeah. schoolies related or uh, different? I've got schoolies related. Yep. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, so, obviously, this year the Gold Coast is introducing pill testing, and given the recent headlines with the illicit substances going around, is that something that we could ever consider bringing to SA? Well, as Superintendent Howard has indicated, there is no safe level for consuming drugs and of course there will be a police presence uh, on the south coast and South Australian school leavers should understand that uh, penalties in relation, to, in relation to the consumption of illicit substances will be enforced. I also want to emphasise that prior to the election the now government made plain that there would be no change to arrangements in terms of pill testing in South Australia, that is there would not be permissive pill testing arrangements. Our view and the view of South Australia Police is that there is no safe level for the consumption of illicit substances. Will you not look at this trial though? What if it does make it safer for, for those people? Well, as I say, I couldn't be clearer. Our position as a government hasn't changed and will not change. The reality is people do take drugs though. Is it not better that they know the drug is safe? The position of the government is that there is no safe level for the consumption of illicit substances and we want that message to be heard and understood by school leavers. There will be a police presence and there are significant penalties for consuming illicit substances in South Australia. Can I ask about the, um, what appears to be a police assault um, in Port Augusta or near Port Augusta? Can you tell us, we've obviously seen one side of that video, what do you know happened in that incident? There are thorough and detailed processes for investigating complaints against police. They're governed by the Police Complaints and Discipline Act. That process is overseen by the Office of Public Integrity. Under the Act, it's not possible for me to provide additional comment, and nor would I want to because I would run the risk of prejudicing that investigation. But I can say that South Australians should be reassured that there is a thorough investigation into police complaints. 
I understand that the police commissioner has also made clear that uh, he would, uh, may choose to release additional information in relation to this matter once the investigation is complete. The outcomes uh, of these types of investigations are often not transparent though. Will you guarantee that the public will know the outcomes of this investigation? Well, as I say, the investigations uh, of this type are treated as a complaint against police. The structure of the Police Complaints and Discipline Act make plain that that process must continue overseen by the API and it wouldn't be appropriate for me to comment at this Does time. Does this represent a systemic problem though with how police treat particularly First Nations people in the state? As I say, complaints against police are overseen by the OPI. Of course, as an independent body, I can't provide any additional comment in relation to this. As the police minister, though, are you shocked by what you saw in that video? Right. I've been advised that there will be a thorough investigation into this matter in accordance with the Police Complaints and Discipline Act. And the police commissioner has also made plain that that investigation is presently ongoing. I think it's important for me to observe that operational matters, including complaints, handled at arm's length from the police minister as is appropriate uh, to avoid, uh, well, for obvious reasons. I put it to you though that it's a mechanism of the police to charge an individual like that that we saw in the video with assaulting police to try and hide the fact that there's been a serious assault by officers. As I say, there's a thorough investigation underway. The process is detailed. The Police Complaints and Discipline Act governs that process. I think it's appropriate for us to wait for the outcome of that investigation before I provide any additional comment. Have these officers been stood down while we're waiting for the outcome? I think it's also important for me to observe that no police minister is involved personally in the appointment or suspension of any officers in South Australia Police. That's a matter, of uh, course, that falls to the executive leadership team, um, most uh, significantly the Commissioner. If not shot, then is the behaviour in that video what you would expect to see from police officers? Well, the full circumstances of this matter uh, are, as I understand it, being examined and we'll wait uh, until the outcome of that investigation before providing an additional comment. Just, just a quick question on um, Kapunda Fatal from yesterday. 79-year-old truck driver charged with dangerous driving. Should there be some sort of limit on the age that people can drive these large vehicles? These circumstances are very distressing and of course concerning. I understand that a man has been charged consequence of that charge of course it's likely that this man will be before South Australian courts. Um, there is age is not necessarily the determining factor in relation to anybody's capacity to operate uh, a motor vehicle. Should there be some sort of limits or are there already limits on age and heavy vehicle licenses? Oh, well, there certainly are appropriate inquiries that are made in terms of people's capacity to operate motor vehicles uh, and uh, heavy vehicles. But as I say, age alone is not necessarily the determinant of whether somebody has the capacity to operate a motor vehicle. Minister, I think a lot of South Australians were shocked by some of the details we heard in the inquest around the baby Kobe yesterday. Um, can I get your reaction to that? How is it that um, a person in custody can make nearly 150 calls to the person who's alleged to this is a very distressing matter and the death of any child in South Australia uh, in these circumstances is taken extremely seriously. It's the subject of a coronial investigation. I think that it's right for me to emphasise at this point that there are recommendations that may be made for, by the coroner will be taken exceptionally seriously, uh, but it is equally important that we allow that process to conclude uh, before providing uh, additional commentary. I understand that it is likely that uh, agency and departmental officers will give evidence and I don't want to prejudice uh, either the coroner's investigation. But right now, could that happen until this process is, has concluded? Could that situation happen today? As I say, uh, the full circumstances will be examined by the coroner, but it is important for me to emphasise that the death of any child in these circumstances in South Australia is deeply distressing to every member of the government. Uh, but there is a coronial inquest underway. Uh, we are course are looking to receive any recommendations that the coroner might make. This has happened three years ago though, what surely the community wants to see faster action than what we have? As I say, the coronial investigation is underway, it's important that that investigation be allowed to conclude. Uh, it's a court process and we look forward to the recommendations, we will take them very, very seriously. I cannot emphasise this point enough however, the death of any child in South Australia in these circumstances is deeply distressing and is taken extremely seriously by every member of government. The Domestic Violence Royal Commission is getting underway today. What change do you hope that can deliver in this area? 
I think it's absolutely important that the government has seen through its commitment to establish a Royal Commission. Every faith in the Royal Commissioner. We are looking at the type of behaviour in our community that just must change. It's entirely unacceptable. The distress and trauma that domestic violence continues to cause is something that will of course be examined very closely by the Royal Commission. It's important that we have a, a commission with the powers that have been enumerated to ensure that we get the best possible advice to government. I have every confidence in the Royal Commissioner and we look forward to those recommendations as well. Minister, just touching on Thunder again yesterday, I suppose, do you have a message for South Australian motorists given obviously the record of fatals we've been having recently going into summer as well? We are coming into the summer and Christmas period where South Australians are using the roads much more widely. People are obviously heading to family celebrations and other events across the state. Please, please be more careful on the roads. This is a partnership road safety between the South Australian Government and our community. We can't do it without you. We need people to be more careful. Well, good guys. Mr Knowles, can I ask one more to you? Sure. That's okay. Yep. Do you have an opinion on hill testing? Do you think it could be a good idea or it's not the right way to go? So, as, as the Minister's already uh, said, that pill testing is not legal in South Australia. Um, our, we work year round, uh, we have a 20 year education program that goes into the schools. It's the largest provision of alcohol and other drug education to South Australian secondary schools. We educate over 30,000 students, parents and teachers on, on the full extent of the risks and harms that uh, drugs and, and particularly alcohol uh, can, can bring into your life. So our message is always very, very clear to, to young people. Heed our, heed our education. Um, it's not a scare campaign program for us. Uh, we, we simply educate young people, particularly around that you do have a choice. And the most pleasing results that we've seen over, over two decades of our work is that the, major, the vast majority of high school age young people do not engage with illicit substance. So our strong encouragement to this cohort of year 12s is to stick with the vast majority that aren't engaged in illicit substances. Enjoy your weekend for, for the celebration that it should be and uh, look after yourselves and look after your mates. Thanks Thank guys. You. Thank you. Sorry. Cool. Just touching on the transport that we spoke about earlier, mm. have you guys provided extra buses this year given last year's accident? Yeah, this year, um, again, in, in partnership with the South Australian Government, we provided an extensive uh, schoolies free bus service for the, for the duration of the weekend. Uh, it'll be incredibly important for young people to take advantage of that. Um, but the, the, the bus service, the free bus, the, sorry, the free schoolies bus service in support of the South Australian Government is a vast network. We do approximately over 20,000 boardings over the weekend. And so we just encourage our young people to plan ahead, book your seat on the bus and utilise the free shuttle service because it's purely catered to the school leavers and the graduating cohort of 2024. But those bus services haven't increased from previous years, that's the same number as every other year? Yeah, it's been great? the same provision uh, for the last, I think, last decade. So yeah. it's, the same, uh, it's, it's the same extensive service that adequately caters for this cohort once again this year. Um, it's a tried and tested direct road safety engagement strategy to uh, reduce the impact on our roads. Thank you. Thank you.